right, at this little segment, we're going to talk about tuning. What is tuning? We talked about it a little bit when we talked about how to go to a concert and what to expect, that the instruments have to tune up. So in that respect, when we talk about tuning, what we mean is that we're trying to get everybody on the same pitch. That's a useful thing if you're going to play in an ensemble. If you remember when we looked on the inside of the piano and we saw that there were three strings for every note and that all three strings had to be tuned to each other, then that was another example of tuning and why it's important. When we get in the Baroque period, we have a major shift in what happens with the whole tuning system. So up to this point, we didn't really talk about scales. The types of, of scales that we used prior to about 1600 were called modes. And there were lots of different ones. And basically they were still combinations of notes, but the, the tricky thing was that because of the tuning systems that we used back then, you couldn't just take a mode and move it to another pitch and it would and still sound the same. Why was that? We basically had three kinds of tuning systems going on before 1600. One of those was called mean tuning, and I'm not going to try to explain any of the details of all these things to you, but that's one kind of tuning. There was another system called just intonation, which intonation just means tuning, uh, which you can still actually do. That's one of the th violins can do that. We talked about how a violin can or string players can adjust a pitch very slightly because they don't have specific places that their fingers have to be. So in just intonation, you can change a note. So if you want it to be a little higher because it's leading into something else, or you need it to be a little lower because it's leading down, you can do that. But uh, string players are the only ones who can really do it, maybe trombone. So we really don't think about that much as a system. The third system that was in use at the period of time was called Pythagorean tuning. You remember Pythagoras, A squared plus B squared equals C squared? He was also into um, the physics of sound. So in his tuning system, if you had the note C and the note G, which is what we call a fifth, we talked about the distance between notes, that's a fifth. In Pythagorean tuning, the frequency, the hertz, we would say now, for G would be at a three to two ratio to C. So all the fifths would be at a three to two ratio, which all sounds lovely and mathematical and perfect, except that what happens is that by the time you go through the whole tuning thing, this fifth to that fifth to this fifth to that fifth, by the time you get to the octave, it's not an octave anymore, it's a little bigger. So the tuning system you know, sort of scientifically made sense, but acoustically did not. So that's all gone. So what did we do instead? When we get to the Baroque period, we have an entirely new system that we call equal temperament. Temperament is another word for tuning. So we have intonation, we have temperament, we have tuning. They all mean basically the same. It's how the notes are in relationship to each other. So when we get to equal temperament, what that tells us is that now, instead of having these odd relationships where when you get to the octave, it's not an octave anymore, all the half steps are exactly the same distance apart. On our piano, we saw that. The sound is the same. You go from one half step to another, it's always the same distance in sound. Not the same pitches, just the same distance between them. So half steps, whole steps, that whole concept is really fairly modern. We're, we're talking about only about 400 years old. So equal temperament, big, big news musically. It's what we have been using ever since. Every now and then we have a regression and somebody will say, oh, I think I'll go try some modal things for a while. And it gives us a different sound. You even hear it in popular music. But for the most part, equal temperament is what we now use. Or sometimes we call it 12-tone tuning because it gave us our 12 tones that are um, equally spaced. So what's really important about equal temperament, aside from the fact that now everything is kind of uniform, one of the things that equal temperament allows us to do is to perform the same piece in more than one key. We didn't really talk about keys until we have equal temperament because, as I said, if you change your starting point, you tried to do a mode from another place, it didn't sound like the same mode. So we don't talk about key until we get to the Baroque period. You start looking at titles of pieces from the Baroque period, you're going to see key names everywhere, especially in instrumental music. Sonata in C minor. Uh, uh, sweet in G major. It's going to be right there. They're proud of it. This was new and exciting. They put the, the key right there for you. But what it means for us 
long term, it's not only that we're now in a sense of key, but that we can change the key of a piece. So suppose that you are a lovely high soprano, and I am not, but we want to sing the same song, not together, but you've, you've sung the song, and you know, maybe you're famous, I like your song. I want to sing it, but I can't sing as high as you can. One option would be for me just to take it down an octave, and it would be in the same key, and I could do that. But that would probably be too low for me to sing. So what I would do instead is to take your great song that I love, and I would transpose it. We would use transposition, moving the position. And I would put it in a different key. So if you were singing, we'll take uh, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, because I can use that without having to worry about any uh, copyright violations with that, right? Everybody can do that. So you're a soprano and you sang it, Row, Row, Row Your Boat. You know, I, was, I can't sing up there. I'm just going to take it on here. Row, Row, Row Your Boat, gently down the stream. Same song, recognizable as the same song, just starts in a different place, different key. Transposition. That's very important. Big thing to remember, you can't transpose in the middle of a piece. You have the piece here, and it's in one key. You have the piece here, and it's in a different key. They're the same piece, two different keys, just keep them apart. They don't play together. So transposition does not happen in a single piece. It's something that happens after the piece. So that's one really important thing that's, that we've been using to great um, avail ever since. The other big thing that equal temperament allows us to do is modulation, modulation. And that is changing key in the middle of a piece. It's a really useful tool, and you hear it all the time. Lots of popular music uses it. You have the verse, you have the chorus, you have the verse, you have the chorus again, you have a little bridge, and then they may kick it up to a little higher pitch range, change the key for that last time through the chorus. Breaks up the sameness of being in the same key. So that's one of the things that um, we, we use quite a lot that has to do with equal temperament. So you can start in one key and change to a different key. The other thing that that allows is actually sort of continuous modulation. If you go back and listen to that Bach invention that we used as our example of polyphonic texture, remember I talked about we had bum 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 and then we would have bum 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 We had that same little lick in lots of different keys. We weren't transposing because we're still in the same piece. We're modulating. We're moving through. We use modulation in lots of different ways. In fact, did you know that AM and FM, that's amplitude modulation and frequency modulation? See, we use those terms all the time. So modulation allows us to change keys within a piece. And you'll hear it a lot from here on and in Baroque music a lot. It's one of the things they love to do, just sort of take the little theme they've come up with, move it around, jump it around, change it through lots of different keys. So we now have equal temperament, which means we can now talk about things being in keys, major keys, minor keys. We can modulate and we can transpose. And that's a really important thing that we're going to hear probably forever. Started in the 1600s.